welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how we can add a activity indicator, otherwise commonly referred to as a loading spinner, to our iOS app. So let's get started by firing up Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to be working with a single view app. Give it whatever name you'd like. We're going to call it Spinner and save it wherever you want, in our case, our desktop. And let's expand this Xcode window to give ourselves some more room to work. Let's hit Command R to run our app in the simulator. And let's start talking about activity indicators. So as uh, you may know, you may not know actually, uh, an activity indicator is a loading spinner that indicates to the user that something's going on, they need to wait, uh, either content's being loaded or some operation is occurring, and there's a variety of ways you can go about adding it. There's a lot of third-party libraries, but we're going to be looking at the native UI kit component that Apple gives us, and that's the same loader that you see across iOS. Uh, if you open up like the App Store and a page is loading, we're going to be working with that guy. So let's start by jumping into our main.storyboard. And let's change the background color of this to black. So we're going to use a white spinner. And let's come up here, hit this to get our library of content, and search for activity indicator. So we want this guy. It's an activity indicator view. So let's drag this on. And you'll see from the get-go that it actually looks exactly what we expect it to look like. It's just gray right now and pretty small. So let's uh, let's come up here right, and take a look at its attributes. So first we see there's a color, there's a style. So let's go with large. We got slightly bigger. Let's give it a white color. And lastly, let's uh, let's apply some constraints to this. So let's come down here, hit this. Let's give it a size of 100 by 100, and let's hit this one and center it in our container, both horizontally and vertically, like so. Let's run our app and see what we get. So as expected, we have the spinner here, but nothing's actually going on. So let's make it actually spin. So let's go to the view controller, and we're gonna add a outlet and this outlet is going to be called, let's call it Spinner. And it's going to be a UI Activity Indicator View. And in here, once this view loads, what we want to do is we want to start spinning. So we're going to say Spinner dot start animating. And let's go back to our storyboard and let's not forget to connect our outlet in here. So I'll right click this, drag from our spinner outlet to our spinner, like so. Let's hit Command R to build and run our app, and we should see the spinning like so. So that's how you create a spinner in your storyboard. Let's add a button down here that is going to stop the spinning. So similar to how we added the indicator, let's hit this library button again, search for a button. Put it on our screen and let's call it stop spinning. Let's apply some constraints to it. In this case, let's just do 200 by 55 and we are going to pin it from the bottom. So let's do 20 and let's make it horizontally centered. So we're going to pick this. And like so, let's go to our, well, we have an error here, it seems. So it seems that we have a fixed width constraint of 200, which is actually a warning. So let's ignore this for now because it's out of scope of this video. But let's go back to our view controller and let's add an IB action. Let's call it button tapped. Let's go back to our storyboard. I don't think I've ever mentioned it in this video, but to get this uh, pop-up to search for files, you can hit Command-Shift-O, and it's a project-wide file search. I probably should have mentioned this several tutorials ago, but uh, of course I have it, but 
Uh, super, super cool pro tip. That way you don't have to go searching for files here once you get a big project going. But anyways, you can right click on this and we can connect our action to our button. And we're gonna use the touch up inside event. Let's head back to our view controller. And in here, what we can do is we can say spinner. And if you wanna guess what it would be called, stop animating. Let's run our app. And we see that this is animating. If we hit this, we stop animating. So a common kind of pattern that people use with this spinner um, is when you're not animating, you can show the show or hide the spinner. So there's actually a property on the spinner, I believe, called hide when stopped. So this is a bool, if I'm not mistaken. And what this essentially does is, as it implies, once the spinner is no longer animating, uh, it'll hide it from the screen. And that's that's kind of the interface that we, we're going for, right? So once we have content, let's say something is loading, once it stops, it'll hide. And if we wanted to come back, we can just say start animating again um, if our button took care of it. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the ins and out of a spinner. Now, there are custom spinners out there. If you go to GitHub or Google and just search for iOS spinner or HUD, uh, which I totally forget what it stands for, but it's a uh, oh, heads up display, actually. That's what it stands for. So it's like one of the larger spinners that you'll see in some of Google's apps and Facebook's apps. Uh, those are custom built. Uh, with animations and views, and those are pretty easy to pull into your app as well. I'll probably do a follow-up video of how to integrate one of those. Uh, but yeah, that's how you add a basic indicator. Uh, before I end this video, we can quickly go over some properties that are available on a spinner. So there is background color. There is just color. Let's make this red. There is, what else is there? Well, I guess you can do the frame here as well. We've set it up in the storyboard, but you can, of course, create a spinner through code programmatically, um, which is oftentimes a little more useful because if you're going to get dynamic content from somewhere online or you're doing something, you don't just want to have the spinner on your screen and show and hide it because you're using a memory even though, though it's hidden. Uh, but that's a little out of scope for this video, but I did want to mention it that it is an option. And if you guys are interested, throw it in the comments. I'd be more than happy to make a video on it. Um, let's run it with these two properties that we've changed. And we'll see that we have an obnoxious red background color and the spinner is also red. So that wasn't really smart on our part. So let's make this blue. And we'll see a blue spinner on a red background like so. And yeah, that's about it. So if you like the video, leave a like below. It helps out the video and the channel a lot. If you have any feedback, questions, comments, please leave them below as well. I always love hearing from you guys and I love helping you out as much as I can. Subscribe if you're new. I do daily Swift tutorials and other software engineering tutorials, videos, some thoughts along the way. And thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.